Next time we'll share the life story that God, or what should I say, God's vision that he's completed so far in my life. When I was, when I was zero, I was zero, I was given up at birth, and for four years I spent in an orphanage in Bulgaria. The first four years, I, this was in Osnitz, Bulgaria, very, very poverty stricken, just outside the capital of Sofia. But then after four years, and after thinking to myself in my mind, Lord, or whoever's listening, is there anyone who, any family who wants this little boy? And one day, one day, God, this is where God began to speak in my life. Danny or Sylvester, you have a mom and dad who want to adopt you. It was that's when I that's when I realized the first crack of light in the darkness was happening in my life. So my mom and my dad, they met me in Kansas City, went through the whole adoption process. And I didn't care who was around in the airport. Here's the little Danny boy. He just ran to his mommy and daddy. He knew what they looked like after only seeing them probably two or three times. He knew what they looked like, so he just ran and jumped into their arms. And, and that was the start of a strong family connection. So after, after we arrived in Kansas, we we moved to well they lived in wisconsin at the time so obviously this little boy who didn't know any better was exposed to a lot of farm but it was wonderful it was so wonderful being on a farm you had lots of place to run to play had lots of friends from bulgaria where i lived we had reunions throughout the years some of them live in maine in Iowa, other parts of the country, so we made road trips, you know, the, my middle school. And but when I arrived in Wisconsin, I was like a ghost in terms of my health. No one knew anything about my health, and I was wearing 18-month clothes at four years old. What you got in terms of a meal in the orphanage was just a slither of vegetable. Because we had to, uh, we had to provide for so many kids. It was a lot, and in the winters, my orphanage had to do more than just provide. They had to shelter the street kids too, because we were the only orphanage with heating and air conditioning. So all those kids, plus the kids in the orphanage, brought together. But. Um, when I, like I said, when I came to Wisconsin, my mom, she started me from the very, very beginning, crawling, like a little baby, sippy cop, and all this, because I never had a family. I don't, if I went to Bulgaria and people, and two, and my mother were to come up to me, I wouldn't be able to tell you that she was my mother. I wouldn't, I don't know what my biological mom looks like. But I know what my Jesus looks like. I know what God looks like. Amen. I, and so I developed a strong bond with my parents. I loved and enjoyed going on the hay bind, the combine, with, with them on the farm, cutting hay, corn. Although my dad's not here, but one there's one day we were out on the field and my dad nearly sent me. My dad nearly sent me flying out the, out one of the machines. We were on a slope, but he caught me, and uh, we're fine. I'm here. <laughs> but God, God spoke to me deeply when I was four years old. I started going to church, the Melrose Alliance Church in Wisconsin, and I met my pianist, my first piano teacher, my first music teacher. And then I met my first pastor in America. They 
they had a great impact on me. They are still, still just absolute <coughs> precious friends. When you have true friends, keep them because we all will go to heaven one day. And so one day I came up to my pastor and I said, I want to accept Jesus into my life. He took me into his office and he said, do you understand what that means? I said, yes, sir, it means. It means you're free from sin. It means you get the chance to make an impact in other people's lives. You get the chance to put a smile on someone's face. A chance to share hope. And um, if I get a little emotional, it's because this is a very special story. And so I accepted Jesus that day. And then what do you know? Next, my mom, my dad, and I, we all get baptized together in the Black River. And uh, since, I was a, since I was a young boy, my mom, she's made journals of my brother and I, of our progress, our life. And so it's, it's just so awesome to see how, how we've grown. I started middle school music, and uh, before, quickly before then, I was in music therapy. I absolutely love music. I love the different rhythms, making different rhythms, and making different sounds. My music therapist, she came to our house three days a week, and that was the best hour of the day. And then I went to school for reading time for music class, and that was just so, it was, it was so sweet, it was so sweet. And uh, I entered middle school, joined the, the band and choir, started on clarinet, and, and obviously I sang. I sang up here because your voice has not changed yet when you, when, unlike now, but so. I will never forget my first musical honor choir. I was singing up here. And then the next year, I'll be singing down here. But I love music. One semester of clarinet, and my band director said, I want you to learn trumpet now. Oh, OK. I'll learn over, over the holiday break. So I pulled up my dad's old cornet and started started playing around and didn't sound pretty at first, but he worked with me and I was, I've been playing trumpet since then. So in middle school, my church journey, obviously we got baptized, but then the Lord said, okay, now it's time for you, now it's time for you to explore and for me to introduce more of what you're going to be like as a Christian. We switched to a different church, Rivers Harvest Church in on Alaska, Wisconsin. It's a non-denominational church, smaller, but it was, that's where God really revealed himself in my life for the first time. My mom and I are very spiritual people, so I began seeing angels. I began seeing God flowing like a river around the church. And Little Danny boy, he he joined the prayer team, and that's where I realized just how powerful and massive the presence of God is. It's all around us. I started praying with the prayer team, and to this day, this one experience sticks with me. My pastor, he calls me up and says, Danny Schlegel, I want you to come up here and pray for these seven hand, sets of hands with arthritis in front of this congregation. I was like this tall. And so I come up there, he's holding the mic, and I just go set by set, and they're all healed at the end of the prayer. And I just, since that moment, the gift of prayer God has used it through me to heal people. God has used my the gift of vision 
to help me understand the kingdom of God more, to help me understand what it is about him that's so inspiring. And then, then after the, and in middle school, after we moved to high school, Throughout middle school, high school, I was very active in music competitions. But the one thing that I feel I would always put first above anything is God. You work to being your best for Jesus. In high school, I joined the band, chorus, and Air Force ROTC. I loved the military for those veterans out there, I absolutely salute you, applaud you. Since I was young, I loved airplanes, and so my mom and I, my mom, dad, and I, we traveled a lot, and if there was an airplane museum around, we would stop by, and I would just be so, so enthralled, and, and I just, yeah, it was a great, it was a great love of mine. My eyes did not provide for me to be a pilot. That's what my first dream was, but. <laughs> but I then realized later on that God had a different plan. God wanted to use me as a music educator. When I was eight years old, I had a, I was in my first honor choir experience, all state experience. And seeing, just seeing the way the conductor brought all these 100 voices together, it inspired me so deeply that I said, I want to be like him. And here I am, 23 years old, still pursuing a ma music education. I'm now in my master's. And so, um, the, passion, the passion is God. God, he watered and shape the passion that I have for music, for ministry. In high school, I was a part of the church. I was part of a Baptist church. Woo woo! <laughs> Rocky by a Baptist church in Niceville, Florida. Never heard of this place called Niceville, but it's very nice there. <laughs> and so we, it was absolutely, that church did a lot for the first couple of years. My brother and I, we were in the youth group, went on some missions, not, or not overseas or out of state, but just some local ones. We worked with volunteer and high school programs. And, um, and then after playing trombone, <laughs> yes, I accumulated many instruments yeah. and I'm like, I'm a one-person band, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I played trombone for a little bit in the first, in the Rocky Bayou Baptist Church Orchestra, but then God called us to a more contemporary church. That was, I felt more connected in this non-denominational church. A lot of my friends who are strong Christians at the time in high school, they went to this church, and I thought, okay. Let's move and see what happens. So I switched churches about sophomore year, late sophomore year, and the last two years I was at Cross Point Church in Niceville. I was a part of the youth worship band, the youth prayer team, and, uh, and let's see, the youth choir. My, too much stuff I've been in. But all of this, all of this, God has used to shape me, just like all the experiences you guys have had in your life. God has shaped you the way he wants you to. Then after high school, after a tremendous journey and growth in high school, God, we started looking at colleges in my senior year at schools. And I just, I can remember the flights home and to these schools, my mom and I had the car rides. I can remember my mom and I, my dad, we went on two trips. The first trip we went to, went to Berry College, Anderson University, and a few others. 
When we came to Anderson University, I just knew that God, that's where, the, that's where I'm meant to go. I just knew right there and then. And I'm sorry, Mom, I'm sorry if I, had a, if I put my foot down to a lot of times, but I just knew this, that Anderson University was right. And so, after some difficult decisions and not knowing how we were, we were going to be able to afford four years, let alone five years, we moved in faith. We moved to Anderson University. My whole family moved here, and um, um, it has meant the world to me to be able to be free to talk about Jesus. It is. It has been an absolute journey. I don't take for granted anything that God has done in my life and is going to do in your lives. I don't take any of it for granted because it's all part of His master plan for the existence of this universe. In high school, my mom, my dad, and I, we joined a couple of other families and we went through the Truth Project. And that, the Truth Project, it sort of talked about the nine pillars of the foundation of God, the foundation for which we are Christians. And that's where I thought about it hard and I thought, we are just a straw, we are just a speck of dust in the whole scheme of things. But yet, we are more than a speck of dust on earth. We are a human being that can make an impact. And I just, I just thank the Lord for all the people He's put in my life. For my parents who never, they never stopped supporting my brother and I. They never stopped. God never stopped. In high school, I had my lowest, I had a low point, and I just thought, how, how am I going to get out of this? And it's like I don't remember that phase because God picked me up and put, and put me, and He kept me, He got me going again. My parents remind me. Any time they that I've had to have, that they've given me a strict, stringent and strict discussion, God handpicked you from Bulgaria, brought you here to America to make an impact on lives. So it's up to you to fulfill the vision of God. It's up to us to fulfill the vision of God, to fulfill the purpose. I've sometimes thought, is this a dream? I used to, that was a question I asked myself a lot early on in life because I just had a hard time comprehending just how much of a blessing it was to live in America. And um, I just, and going back to university, moved here, I started, uh, undergrad in music education and I started I one of my favorite things about Anderson University was just the chapel every Wednesday it was just a time in the middle of the week to just let go if you had stress or anything going on that was frustrating you that was on your mind you come to chapel on Wednesdays you just let go and let God through music through preaching, just let God speak in you, speak in your heart. And so I felt a lot of healing through chapel. And then I church wise I started a traditional Baptist church. Wore the robes. Bring the robes up. They brought we wore the robes and I had to wear a kid size robe because I was because I was too short for an adult robe. That's the life. 
I'm sure people, but it's great. I shared my, I shared my gift of music through there, and God allowed me to work with a, work with a pastor, with a music minister, a children's ministries. But then I realized, I realized my senior, my first senior of the university, super senior, whoop. I realized the first senior that I actually, I was missing something in my life. I was just, I was on a scholarship. It was a scholarship intern that a position that I was taking at this first church. And I just realized it's not about the money. It's not about being praised for the music. It's about being part of a body of Christ where you can lead. We can all lead people to Jesus. We can all lead through music, all lead through story, all lead to who we are. And I just thought about it closely and that's when I realized I wanted to revisit Concord Baptist. So I revisited and I revisited it and um, it was at a concert in December that I actually came up to Kevin. I met him for the first time and I said, I said, I feel like I need a new vision for my faith and my journey. I feel like I need to strengthen my walk with Jesus. And so he, that was the first time that I started with this church. The next year, next year in January, I started this church. And it was uh, last summer that I became a member of this church. And uh, all I want to say to wrap that story, this whole story up is your story matters. Never take for granted the story that God is one day at a time putting together. Your story matters because it's what's shaping the kingdom of God. The faith is what keeps us going in this world of unknown. God if there's any, if anyone, if we had all our friends lead, our biggest friend that encompasses more than we can ever think, Jesus, he's not going to leave. He's not going to leave because he is everything. So that's my story. Mom is right there. She's the one with the black eye. So, yeah.